This is uh, the first of a series of videos in which I'm going to show a series of cases of atypical nevi and give you some ideas of how I approach them. But before coming to that, I think some general comments about reporting melanocytic nevi are appropriate. Like all dermatopathology, melanocytic lesions do require significant clinical pathological correlation. And the reason for this, of course, is that the dermatologist is the gross pathologist. And when he or she examines a patient, they get all sorts of information which may be critical to you as the pathologist when you're looking at a case before you come to a definitive di di diagnosis. Now, many of you w w will tell me that uh, the, the specimens come with a request form saying skin query diagnosis, and um, I don't think that's good enough, really. I, I think it's up to you, the, the pathologist, to establish a good relationship with your dermatologist so that he or she understands the problems that you face without clinical information and makes more of an effort to help you out. After all, it's the combined work of you and the dermatologist which often uh, benefits the patient most. Uh, on the left, I, I've listed a, a, these are the things that I think the dermatologist should be able to tell you about. Now, the first thing, obviously, is uh, we need to know the age of the patient, and we need to know the age at onset of the lesion. So let's, let's say um, we have a male in his 40s, and he has a three-month history of, a, of a, a pigmented lesion on his back. And histologically, that shows uh, melanoma in situ. Well, that's not a great problem. It's an easy diagnosis to make, so you can sort that out. But supposing that biopsy came from a two-month-old baby and it had been present at birth, what would you do then? Well, the answer is very simple. Neonatal nevi can be wildly atypical and can look like in situ melanoma. But in fact, in reality, it's just a variant of neonatal nevus. So it's really important that you, you do know the age of the patient before you start looking at a case. Now, there are some general rules that we can follow. Uh, one of these is symmetry, and although it's not a hard and fast rule by a long shot, it is a fair generalization to say that benign lesions are symmetrical and malignant or dysplastic neve lesions are asymmetrical. Uh, similarly, with the, with the border, benign lesions have a regular border, melanoma has an irregular border. The color of a lesion can be very helpful. A uniform pigmentation uh, generally indicates a benign lesion. If a, if a lesion has multiple colors, say it's pale brown, it's dark brown, there are white areas, those are all indicators that the lesion is going to be a melanoma. The white area is often representing regression. Now, there's a lot of talk about diameter of lesions, and I, I, I'm not really convinced about this, but dysplastic nevi and melanomas are six millimeters in diameter or more. I don't really understand that. I can't see why a melanoma can't be three millimeters in diameter. And in fact, we've had cases posted on the key derm showing just, just that. Evolution of the lesion. What this means is that the, uh, the lesion has, has grown a period of time. 
perhaps the surface has changed, maybe there's been a nodule developing at an edge of a lesion, something along those lines, which gives you a really good clue as to what's going on. The site of a lesion is very important, as I'll show you shortly. Uh, nevi about the external genitalia, particularly in females, can be wildly atypical, and yet they're quite benign. Recent changes I've touched on, and lastly, the reason for the biopsy. If, if the clinician tells you that they're worried about a lesion because it looked fine, and then in the most recent examination there was a, a variation in colour with a very dark area at one edge, well, when you look down the microscope at the histology, it's very important that you find that area that worried the clinician. And if it's not present on the original sections, then you need to do levels until you see what it is. It might be a combined nevus. It might be a, a deep penetrating nevus. Or it might be a melanoma arising within a nevus. So levels are often necessary before you come to the definitive diagnosis. And on the right, we have a lovely picture shared with me by Dr. Neve Leonard of uh, a baby with a bathing trunk nevus and multiple proliferation nodules. Now, I put this uh, picture in because the thing I've noticed on McKee Derm is that very few people seem to ink their specimens. And it's really, it's a very simple technique. All you need to do is get a paintbrush and a bottle of Indian ink and Ink, ink the bottom and the edges of the specimen before you process them. And this has the value that it enables you to identify what the true, the, the true margin is. If we look at, at this specimen here, we can see blue ink along the bottom of the specimen and going along to the sides. Now, this is a, a fairly easy to diagnose in situ melanoma. And there you can see, for example, that is really a true margin, and the ink comes up to there, uh, and that's a true margin. So you know that this is fully, the, the lesion extends to a margin. So it's very important that you always ink uh, tumors, let, let us say, but particularly melanocytic lesions because you don't want to be re-excising lesions unless you have to. It causes the, the patient undue suffering, and it gives you a lot more work than you might necessarily have had to had. Now, um, there are lots of nevi which may show cytological atypia. I'd make the point dysplastic nevi, for me, invariably so show cytological atypia. Now, dysplastic nevi is a very controversial topic, and it's become even more controversial with the advent of molecular studies, and I'm going to talk about that in a separate talk. Uh, it, in this presentation, I'm going to restrict myself to neonatal nevi and genital-type nevi and nevi of special sites, and I'll present uh, videos on the other uh, topics subsequently. And on the right, just, just uh, as a good starting point, this is a, a so-called recurrent nevus. And in, in reality, that's actually a misnomer because it's not a recurrent nevus, it's a regrowth of the nevus. This was a, uh, a nevus that had a shaved biopsy for some reason, and uh, lots of nevus was left behind because it was a shave, and there's the scarring that is a response to the surgery, and the nevus has regrown along the top of the lesion uh, to give a rather worrisome histological appearance, and I'll come back to that in the second video. Now, I thought it would be appropriate just to remind the, the uh, first-year residents of what nevi looked like, and this is a junctional nevus. It's a nice uniform brown color, it's very small, and on the right at the top you can see a very early junctional nevus with little nests arising at the tips of the reti ridges. 
and on the bottom picture you can see very well formed nests of uniform nevus cells arising at the tips of the reedy ridges. In many of the atypical melanocytic proliferations, the nests arise not just at the tips but at the sides and sometimes over the tops of the dermal papillae. And this is a compound nevus. One of the things I forgot to mention in the clinical is that in benign lesions, the, the skin lines tend to cross the surface of the nevus, and so you, you can see them continuing on from the normal skin and going across the surface of the nevus. In a melanoma, that feature is lost. Now, this is a compound verrucous nevus, and on the right, we we can see the junctional area in high power. And what you can notice is that the junctional component and the superficial dermal component are composed of type A nevus cells. And these have abundant cytoplasm. Uh, it's often heavily pigmented. You can see lots of small melanin granules in the somewhat eosinophilic cytoplasm, and the nuclei are round to oval with conspicuous nu nuclei. And this, this carries on down to the superficial dermal component. Now, uh, as a nevus ages, or we sometimes say ne as, as a nevus matures, uh, it loses the junctural activity and becomes a wholly intradermal lesion, as you see in this bottom left-hand image. It's a dome-shaped uh, papule. And um, on the right side, we can see that the nevus is composed predominantly of small cells with minimal cytoplasm and very dark hyperchromatic blue nuclei. These are type B nevus cells. And then as the lesion matures further, we begin to see the development of spindle cells, which are seen at the bottom here. And these are type C nevus cells. And here we have a sort of an end stage nevus where it's undergone neurotization. And on this left quadrant, you can see uh, a pseudo Meissner body. And sometimes nevi may become totally neurotized. And then, of course, it's difficult to decide whether a lesion is a, 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 a neurotized nevus or whether it represents a neurofibroma. Now, sometimes you'll encounter this type of phenomenon in, in a biopsy, the so-called inverted type A nevus, whereby pigmented type A nevus cells at the top are, are found at the bottom. Now, mostly this, is, this represents a variant of a combined nevus, but in this example, it's not abnormal at all because this is a very dilated uh, pilosebaceous follicle, um, which is extended, is cystic and extended deeply down into the, uh, the dermis. Now, if you remember, uh, in the anatomy of the skin, the, the hair follicle ha has an outer layer of papillary dermis that follows it all the way around. And so this pigmented deposition of type A cells is lying within the, retic the papillary dermis of the hair follicle. So it's actually normal, but it looks in, a, in an abnormal location. So that's, uh, that's just one little variant that you may come across. And here's a strange one uh, whereby we have a, a totally dermal nevus. There's some residual type A cells at the top most of the lesion is composed of type B cells, and at the bottom here you can see spindle cells, so these are type C cells. But at the top, overlying the type B cells, are areas of neurotization. So if you like, you could call this uh, uh, an inverted type C nevus. This is just a histological curiosity and is of no consequence to the patient.
Now, I just wanted to remind you that melanoma may sometimes arise in a nevus. It, it, it's very rare. If you think how many people have have 10 or 15 or 20 nevi, uh, you don't very often see a patient presenting with a nevus that's undergone malignant change, but it does happen from time to time. And here's a lovely example shared with me by Dr. Patrick Emanuel from Peru. And on the left, you can see a warty nevus. And on the right, you can see a great big nodule f composed of s smaller expansile nodules. And even at that low power magnification, you can look at that and really, it's so obviously a melanoma and it can't be anything else. There really isn't a differential diagnosis. I suppose if it had been a congenital nevus and there was lots of nevus cells forming uh, a huge exp uh, proliferation down here, you might wonder about a proliferation nodule. But this is just an ordinary compound nevus and under uh, in, in such circumstance this cannot be anything other than melanoma and there's a close-up view there showing uh, the, on the bottom left we have some of the nevus cells and on the right you can see these great expanse nodules of very heavily pigmented cells and when we look at them in close-up you can see on the left uh, a huge, huge expanse cell nodules of very, very interesting cells. They almost look as if, the, the, they look almost like a, a sort of a brick wall. They're, they're, they appear to be equidistant from one another. They're big cells with abundant cytoplasm, very large nuclei and, and prominent nucleoli, and they're separated by a very, very stretched uh, component of dermal connective tissue. That histology on its own is melanoma. There is no differential diagnosis. That's what it is. On the right, we can see the deep aspect of the benign nevus showing maturation. Now, it's important to briefly mention um, mitotic activity in nevi. And on the right, we see a, a, this is a mitosis that I found in a banal nevus. And it's important to remember that all nevi may contain mitoses. If you think about it, let's say a nevus presents as a two millimeter diameter um macula on the arm of a two-year-old baby by the time it's 15 or 16 it's maybe grown to four millimeters in diameter and it's become a bit more warty well if it's grown if the patient's grown and the lesion's grown then the lesion lesion must have my toes otherwise it couldn't have grown that's just common sense so my my thinking about mitoses are, are are really not so much how many there are, but where they're located and what what is the nature of the associated nevus. If you find one or two or even three mitoses at the top of the lesion, it may not matter very much. But if on the other hand you find mitotic activity, and there are worrisome features in the dermal components such as prominent nuclei or rather subtle pleomorphism or impaired maturation, then you've obviously got to think more in the context of nevoid melanoma. And this is a this is a compound nevus. You can't quite see the edge of the lesion there, but it was circumscribed and symmetrical. Uh, if you draw a line down here, pretty much the, you can fold the left and the right sides together. So it's fairly symmetrical. And you can see at the bottom it's undergoing good maturation. And here's a close-up view showing type A cells at the top and type B cells at the bottom with the few spindle cells at the very deep margin. So it's a, it's a benign nevus. And yet... Uh,
having searched for ages, I did find in Nevis. And the, the message is uh, that the harder you look and the more sections you examine, the more likely you are to find a, a mitosis. But always use common sense and, and think of the mitosis in the context of the lesion itself. Don't focus just on the mitotic figure. And to make that point even further, Mark Zaki shared this nevus in pregnancy with us on Mechidarm, and here's a warty nevus, and he found four mitotic figures in it. There's one, two, three, and I, I couldn't photograph the fourth. But anyway, it's just to remind you that pregnant patients may have nevi with multiple mitoses, and they don't matter. Now, I want to talk about congenital nevi in neonates, and perhaps we could expand that certainly to the first year of life, maybe the first 15 months even. And the biopsy on the right comes from a, a neonate who had a congenital nevus, uh, and this was biopsied. And when you look at that picture, if you take it out of context and you have no clinical information, well, then I think you'd be thinking about uh, a melanoma. There's a very atypical uh, junctional component, and it's arising. It's not arising at the tips of the dome or papillae. It's arising very much uh, 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 over the uh, re reti ridges on the sides of the dome or papillae. The individual cells are large, they're pleomorphic, and the dermal component isn't much better. So uh, out of context, it would be fair to call that melanoma. But when you know it's a one-month-old baby, well, then it's not a melanoma, it's a neonatal nevus. And um, biopsies of nevi in neonates now they may just look like uh, like ordinary nevi they don't always show these atypical features but the point is they can and they can show all of the features that i've listed on the left hand side they can show all of the features that we associate with melanoma but with clinical information clinical pathological correlation you can you can uh, prevent yourself making a terrible misdiagnosis by being able to recognize that that is, that is meaningless in a neonate. And here's a, here's a, almost like a test case. This is, a, uh, this is another neonate, but when you look at it, you can see large, their expansile nests in the epidermis and their expansile nests in the dermis and there's involvement of this hair follicular epithelium, and you can see very severe cytological atypia in the dermal component. So if that was an adult, you'd say, oh gosh, this looks like a nested melanoma. But we happen to know again that this is in a child aged around about one month, maybe a little bit older, I've forgotten. But anyway, knowing that it comes from a, uh, a young child enables us to recognize this as another neonatal nevus. And in this view uh, of one aspect of junctional activity, we can see that the nevus cells are huge, they're very hypochromatic, they're very irregular. And another view, uh, and in, in, in this one, we can see severe cytological atypia. If we focus on this nest here, look at the size of that cell with a huge new nucleolus. Uh, and this extends down to involve the dermal component. If this was an adult, this is melanoma, but it's a neonate, so it's not melanoma. And here's another view showing again the deep aspect of the lesion, there's no maturation in this case. And here's another view, and uh, th there's a mitotic figure in the dermal component. So I think if you took all those pictures together and made it a 35-year-old uh, a female with a lesion on her leg, you'd call it a melanoma, but it's not, it's a neonate, so it's just a nevus.
And here's a final example. This is not such a severe one. You can see it's a compound nevus, but the junctional activity is all over the place. It's not on the tips of the reedy ridges where you'd expect it to be. Uh, the dermal component appears quite, quite banal. And there's a close-up view, and you can see there's marked cytological atypia. And in another view, you can see there's pagetoid spread and uh, severe cytological atypia. But the dermal component's fine. Now, the last topic to discuss on, in this presentation is nevi of special sites. Uh, when they were first documented, it was really limited to the uh, nevi occurring in the external genitalia in young people, and it was predominantly females. And in fact, uh, atypical genital nevi are very rare in males, so um, mostly when we see them, they're they're young women uh, or, or girls. They present in, in uh, patients in the second and third uh, decades. It's a good rule of thumb. Uh, you, you, melanoma occurs in 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds, 80-year-olds. Atypical genital nevi occur in teenagers and women in their 20s. That's not to say you can't get a melanoma in a young woman, because you can, but melanoma in a young woman's vulva looks like a melanoma. Uh, it doesn't look like a nevus of special sight, which has, has, which has very characteristic appearances. Sub subsequently, it was realized that you may get identical features in nevi along the milk line. So you may see these in the groins, the umbilicus, the axilla. And then it was realized you can see them on the scalp and the ear. And I, I think I've seen them from all over the place, certainly from the trunk and the back. And uh, the whole point is it's the histology of the nevus that tells you what it is rather than necessarily the site. So when, once you get your eye in, you'll recognize them quite easily, and they won't cause you any concern. But histologically, they may show all of the features that we describe when we're talking about melanoma, just as we did with the ne neonatal nevi. And uh, so clinical pathological correlation is very important. You need to know the age of the patient, and you need to know the site of the lesion. And if you know those two features, it makes life much easier. So, um, nevi at special sites, they all look pretty much the same. They have large and variably sized uh, junctional nests that may show bridging. That's the melanocytic population is very discohesive and it may look frankly malignant. Usually the dermal component appears banal, which makes it easy. And on the right here, we have a, a very early lesion, but you can see on the right hand side, there's a lot of pigmentation and you can make out some junctional nests. And even at this magnification, you can see the nuclei are very large and hyperchromatic. So here's our first uh, case. It's a female of 23 with a one centimeter irregular pigmented lesion on the labia maius. And if we look at this, you can see there's a, a, a intensely pigmented lesion. So this would have appeared clinically as an almost black lesion, which I'm sure worried the clinician uh, greatly. The, these lesions are often picked up at uh, first at, uh, at the cervical smear clinic. The, the, the gynecologist, when he's examining the patient, will discover a pigmented lesion on the vulva and um, can get worried about them and then take a biopsy so that we see them. But anyway, that, that, that's a fairly good example of what the low power looks like. And this is uh, some higher power views of that lesion. And you can see intensely pigmented nests just scattered around the epidermis, not arising from hair or from the reedy ridges necessarily, 
But as we move down the lesion, you can see that it matures very nicely with depth. And on the right, we have a high power view just to show that there's cytological atypia. And here are two more views. This is the top. You can see the nuclei are pretty large and nucle nuclei are prominent. Uh, and on the right, you can see that there are type B nevus cells with scattered spindle type C nevus cells. So there's good maturation. But the problem with this particular nevus is that it had two mitotic figures, one in the middle of the lesion and uh, 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 and one near the bottom of the lesion. And um, these obviously caused a bit of concern. And there's one of the neat mitoses in higher power. And you can see that there, there, there's a little bit of pleomorphism of the, uh, of the type A cells. And the point I want to make to you is that in the right context, and in this case, this, this was the vulva of a young woman. I can't remember her exact age, but she was in her, either in her late teens or early 20s, and we know it came from the vulva. Then we know this is benign because vulval nevi and young woman can show mitosis just like this. So clinical pathological correlation makes the diagnosis. And here's a, an, another case. We can see on the top right that it's a compound nevus, and we can see that the bottom matures very nicely. But there's a very abnormal proliferation at the uh, junctional region with large nests containing discohesive cells. And there's this funny bit here. It's You can see it on the top there. There's a subcorneal deposit of melanocytes. I'm not quite sure how it got there. It's probably some sort of odd artifact, but it was just interesting to see it. But if we look at that junctional region at higher power, you can see uh, there's a retraction artifact. Uh, the, the, the lesion bridges. I suspect if we had serial sections, this nest would join up with all of this and you'd bridge, bridge across the whole thing. And here's another one, and I think by now you should be getting your eye in. It's a compound lesion that matures with depth. That we've got these huge, huge, heavily pigmented junctional nests. And there it is in close-up, very pigmented. Interestingly, it's got some multinucleated giant cells, which might confuse the unwary. And uh, But when we look at the deeper part, we see maturation, so we don't have to worry about it. Another one, and by now these are becoming child's play for you, huge junctional nests, very heavy pigmentation, uh, nests not, not at the tips of the reedy ridges, uh, and a very discohesive population. And this is case six. It's compound. There's a little bit of dermal activity, but mostly it's junctional. And again, you can see the nests are scattered around the sides of the reedy ridges rather than the tips. They're very big. There's a retraction artifact. They're discohesive, and there's lots of pigment. Another classical uh, nevus of special site. And there's a close-up view there. And this is the last one. Just to finish it off, to make sure that the, 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 um, the, the histology is well and truly embedded into your mind and to in, into your memory, this one looks exact, exactly the same as the last one, except interestingly there are a whole bunch of uh, balloon cells and there you see balloon cells in higher magnification and 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 there vulval melanoma in a female age 64 if you remember melanoma occurs in the older patients atypical genus nevi in young patients and this shows an irregular sawtooth acanthosis rather like the epidermal changes that we see in acrolentigenous melanoma
with a, a dense infiltrate in the underlying dermis and on close-up you can see a, a very atypical uh, population of cells that shows no maturation whatsoever and I hope you can see that this histology is very different from that which we've been looking at in atypical genital nevi. Uh, and so I'm going to finish up uh, at this point and the next uh, video I'm going to record I'm going to talk about recurrent nevi and combined nevi. I hope you find this uh, video useful and if you have any comments please please make them on the Facebook page in case you want to ask me any questions and also I'd remind you if you haven't subscribed to, to my videos please do so because I am hoping that we'll reach a thousand subscribers and then we might be able to get a dermatology uh, a company to sponsor our site and then we can raise some money for our less for our more disadvantaged members so that they can come to meetings and so on thank you very much